everyone! Lately I have been trying really hard to film videos several weeks in advance. The reason for that is because just after my birthday I am off on a short family holiday and I want to make sure that I'm not panicking in the run-up to that about having videos to go live while I'm away or in the week after. So I've been trying to sort of catch up with myself and record videos several weeks ahead just to make sure that while I'm away on my holiday, the only thing I have to worry about is just relaxing. And of course, yes, I will probably vlog a lot of the holiday too, so you will have that to look forward to. Before we start this video, I do have to just apologise for the fact that I'm melting. It's still really hot in the UK right now. So with this whole filming in advance thing, if my calculations are correct, this particular video will go live the day before we find out who the new Prime Minister of the UK is. It's a really exciting choice. It will either be the incredibly stupid far-right extremist or the incredibly wealthy and out of touch with normal people far-right extremist. Naturally, the TV and print news have been absolutely full of this completely riveting Tory leadership campaign. Both candidates are in agreement on the need to stamp out wokeness, but take very different views on taxation. And it has made me wonder what I would do if I was Prime Minister. You know, apart from immediately resign because I don't want that job. I mean, it comes with a free house, but it's a house Boris Johnson has lived in. You'd need to have that place fumigated. I'm going to be honest with you and say the very first thing I would do is plunge a whole heap of money into our NHS. Free healthcare is, in my opinion, a basic human right. Nobody should be dying or seriously unwell because they can't afford medical treatment or their insurance doesn't cover it. I think we should be massively proud of the fact that in this country we have a healthcare system that is free at the point of use, but for the last decade or more it has been grotesquely underfunded and that has led to problems. Seeing it underfunded and seeing it tiptoe towards privatisation by stealth thanks to a government who, you know, promised us £350 million a week to the NHS if we would only vote for the glorious, wonderful thing that was Brexit, is pretty frustrating. Things aren't in a great place with the NHS right now, I think most of us can probably agree on that, but I don't think they're beyond fixing. So if I was Prime Minister, the very first thing I'd do would be putting that money into the NHS. And that includes throwing money at NHS dentistry, because believe me, it seems like we don't have any NHS dentists anymore. My surgery's gone private, and suddenly we're all paying a lot more for dental treatment, and we're hearing stories of people who are literally pulling out their own teeth because they can't afford to see a dentist. And seeing as how Brexit, since we've mentioned the B word, has caused basically nothing but delays, shortages, and societal division. <laughs> Look, I know I couldn't do that without having some kind of national vote, but a fictional Prime Minister can dream, right? And speaking of the EU, I would be doing what other countries have been doing over there and putting up a proper energy price cap. There are people who are genuinely scared about having to choose between heating their homes and eating this winter in the UK in the 21st century. All the while, fat cat energy bosses are just getting richer. Let's just pause for a moment to think about chonky cats to make ourselves feel better. And to be honest, in order to prevent people suffering whilst these bosses just get richer and richer, I would be very tempted to just nationalise everything. Energy, water, the railways. Let's put service ahead of profit and see if anything changes. Look, I realise a lot of this sounds 
are too serious. But, you know, I need to solve all the many, many problems with Britain before I can get on with introducing the fun stuff. You know, like making Eurovision weekend a bank holiday for everyone. Speaking of energy, I would take climate change really seriously and I would plunge a whole lot of money into renewable energy sources. You see, I do kind of think it's important that we take what's happening to the planet pretty seriously and we put measures in place to protect it for future generations. And renewable energy is a really good way of doing that. And unfortunately, neither candidate seems to give much of a toss about climate change. I mean, Liz Truss has just said that if made Prime Minister, she'll get rid of solar farms. You know, that's renewable energy. Why would you do that? I'd also look into changing our infrastructure to make it easier for us all to cope with extreme temperatures. Because, you know, I am melting. So yeah, I would take climate change pretty seriously. And speaking of things that I would take seriously if I were Prime Minister, I'd stop pretending COVID's gone away. I would be looking into steps that we could take to protect children and teachers in schools because, you know, at the start of this whole pandemic, it was like, oh, it doesn't matter if kids get it, they'll be fine. And now, you know, there's all these studies into long COVID in children and the damage it can do to their bodies. And the government are just like, woo, it's gone away, magic freedom, no more masks, yay! And meanwhile, people are still literally dying. So yeah, one of the first things I would do in terms of COVID would be looking into how we can protect people in schools. Your school gets a HEPA filter, your school gets a HEPA filter, everyone's school gets a HEPA filter! I would crack down on homophobia and particularly transphobia, which is genuinely revolting right now. There's so much of it around and it's been legitimized, much like homophobia seemed to be legitimized in the 80s with a lot of fear being spread around. No, we will be getting rid of that and enshrining LGBTQ plus rights in as much law as possible. And you know, if that sounds a bit woke of me, good. Because I'm not gonna lie, if I were Prime Minister, I'd be a pretty woke Prime Minister. There's all this talk of levelling up under Boris Johnson and the two candidates have also mentioned levelling up without, you know, actually talking about what that means. I'm assuming they don't mean they're going to play Sonic the Hedgehog for a while, which is a shame because I'd rather they went away and did that. But under my government, we really would level up. And that would mean that everybody would have fair and equal opportunities. I would introduce a proper living wage for everybody so people could lift themselves out of poverty. I would ensure that those who genuinely can't work due to disabilities, etc., would have proper financial support in place and I would try and crack down on the judgement that those people get. It would be really important to me if I was Prime Minister that I was, you know, in charge of a country where everyone had access to the same opportunities regardless of their gender, their sexual orientation, their age, their ethnicity, whatever. I want everyone treated equally and given access to the same stuff. And yes, that's damn woke, and I don't care. Because you see, both of the Tory leadership candidates have spoken with great gusto about how they're gonna crack down on wokeism. And recently there was a news report in which some guy went round and like asked Tory supporters what the biggest, most important thing to them is in this whole leadership campaign, and several of them went, We need to stamp out wokeism. And yet, when they were asked what that meant, they didn't know. If I were Prime Minister, everyone in this country would know what woke actually means. And, you know, just for the benefit of everyone, I'm going to say it now. Woke means aware. It means recognising that not all of us live the same experiences. Not all of us have the same background. Not all of us have the same access to opportunities. It means acknowledging that not everybody is the same as you and therefore something that doesn't affect you at all might be quite harmful to that person. So perhaps we should consider how everyone feels. 
It doesn't mean we have to be namby pamby and suddenly not be able to say happy Christmas in case we offend anyone anymore. People are really quick to be like, oh, it means you can't say anything anymore. And actually, no, it just means that hate speech isn't okay. To me, wokeism is the complete opposite of this well i'm okay it doesn't affect me so i couldn't give a toss about anyone else attitude which has really really been prevalent particularly in the last two to three years in fact i go so far as to say some people genuinely revel in having that attitude which i find kind of gross and they refer to themselves as anti-woke i refer to them as Actually, yeah, that's a good point. I don't think I should be Prime Minister because I would almost certainly swear in the House of Commons and I have a feeling that's frowned upon. In reality, like I said, I would absolutely hate to be Prime Minister, but I do wish that we had someone in this leadership race who actually had a plan beyond seemingly taking us back several centuries. Yep, we're screwed. What would you do if you were Prime Minister? What laws would you bring in? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. You can click on my floaty head if you'd like to subscribe. And last week's video is over there. I am off to go and enjoy my last few weeks at the time of filming of blissful ignorance of who the next Prime Minister will actually be. <laughs> Talk to you all next week. Bye.